Hansen. Hansen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta beat Hansen. <laughs> It don't matter what my name is, I don't got one, I'm not famous, no. Can you guys just start out by introducing yourself, what you do in the band, and your go-to song to sing in the shower? Yes. Um, um, my name is Adam, I play bass and I sing, and my go-to song to sing in the shower probably would be Piano Man, Billy Joel. Nice. Nice. I'm Jack. Um, I do lead vocals and I play guitar. And uh, the go-to shower song has got to be Stacy's Mom, Fountains of Wayne. I'm Ryan. I uh, play keys and uke for the band. And my go-to shower song would be Defying Gravity from Wicked. Such a good choice. <laughs> This tour is wrapping up in just a few days for you guys, so how has it been going so far? Tour's been really, really fun. Uh, this is our first full U.S., uh, headline U.S. tour, and uh, it's really cool. We've been, we were saying today, like, we just got into Arizona, and there's just so many mountains. We've gotten to see, like, five different terrains, which yeah, we've never done before. We usually just do, like, East Coast or West Coast. How many states have we, you counted? I think it's 28 states on this tour. Been through, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, Music-wise, I mean, we're touring with We The Kings, and they are just so cool, really nice guys. And honestly, we just love performing, so the more we can do it, the better. You guys have toured with people ranging from Demi Lovato to Cody Allen to obviously now We The Kings, and those are all sort of very different demographics. Um, so have you noticed that your fan base is quite diverse as well? Yeah, it's fun for us to see who we can appeal to. Um, totally different audience with Hoodie Allen. We did Hoodie Allen in the UK, and it's all like night. I think I have a bug in my armpit. I literally just felt something moving in my armpit. Most likely, yeah. All right. I don't know where it went. Let's um, get that, <laughs> that answer coming. Yeah, like uh, it's like all like eighteen-year-olds in tank tops, like for Hoodie Allen. And we got to see that we appealed to them, and then with Demi Lovato, it's a lot of younger girls, and then uh, I, I guess our core fan base is most similar to We The Kings out of all the tours we've done. It's like I like that you said 18 year olds in tank tops. Like yeah, 18 year olds in regular t-shirts not for no, but that's, tank tops not that's that's cool. Like, yeah exactly. And yeah anyway it's just like really cool to see how many different types of people, any age and, and gender and any kind of demographic that we can build to. Your new single I'm Not Famous just dropped about 10 days ago. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about the music video you just finished filming? Yes, yeah, we, we shot can. the music video like a day after we finished the song because um, it, it felt like we knew exactly what the visual was supposed to be. And sometimes if you finish a song and then wait six months and then start thinking about video concepts, it can feel stale and the visual cannot be like perfectly attached to the audio. So we wanted it to be really fresh. Um, and we did something that we like we came up with the concept ourselves and shot it ourselves and the whole video was like a couple hundred dollar budget for renting a camera or whatever. Um, we found that those make the best videos. I yeah, think. yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of it. I can't wait for it to come out because I think it's just like so aligned with the message of the song. And have you decided when you're gonna release it yet? Or we're, like the next couple weeks, right? Yeah, we need to yeah, find the perfect time to align with radio, but the next couple weeks for sure. And it's fairly common knowledge that you guys write songs for other artists. So how that's, does, very that's cool that it's common knowledge. <laughs> I mean, I watch like 400 interviews and oh, things okay. like that in every interview. You do. Yeah. Um, so how does that process work? Do you write something with someone in mind or do they contact you and are like, yo, um, write us something now? It's literally every, it's every situation you can think of. We, we, uh, we can sit there and be like, oh, we want to write a song for Demi Lovato. Let's do it and we'll find the, her manager. Oh, sorry, oh, I love this. Thank you. Give him a little scrap. And we'll find her manager and we'll pitch it. Or they contact us say, we want to write with you guys. You wrote I'm Ready, which is like Platinum, which is like, which just happened, which is very cool. So, and or also we contact their managers and say, hey, we want to do a session with so-and-so. When are they available? So it's really just any any situation. Have you ever had it like not work out? Like someone's like absolutely not like Oh constantly. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I sit there, I'm like the one doing it, so yeah. like I'm writing daily to as many managers as I can think of and like I think half are like, hi, I'm really not interested right now, or like they're a little bit mean. At least they yeah. respond. They, exactly, yeah. that's really nice. He has this this app on his computer where he can see like when people, when people open their yeah. emails, and I just don't want that because I'm afraid of seeing every single one of his managers <laughs> opening it and not responding. <laughs> That's so so great. Yeah. He loves it. Yeah. Love it. You guys all sort of seem like you have old souls, like the music you're into. I mean, I hope that's not offensive. No, um, no, no, but no, you're, no, you're into like thing. classic music, yeah. um, which I feel like is not very characteristic of like our generation. 
Uh -huh. um, and so, uh, what is it like for you guys to sort of be in this generation where social media is so prevalent and artists are sort of expected to like share everything? Because that definitely wasn't how stuff used to be. Yeah, we talk, yeah go ahead, go ahead. we talk about this a lot. Like, I wonder if somebody like a group like Simon and Garfunkel would have been famous at a time like now with social media where we would get to see every moment of their lives and all the behind the scenes stuff. You know, something that's really important to us is keeping the focus on the music. And whether it's the remixes that Jack does and he tweets and posts on Instagram, or just continually posting and putting out new music, we really want that social world of the behind the scenes to really be all music focused. And you get to see all the different facets of how we write and mix and produce and edit yeah, videos. Yeah. And I think that's the best part of social media. Yeah. Not necessarily the where you get to. I mean, it's cool to see people's personalities, I guess. But I, I don't really care when some celebrity is like on the toilet and tweeting about it or whatever. I really, personally, as a fan, I really care about the music, and that's all I want to see. So that's all we want to put out to people. You know, adding on to that, I mean, the new song, the new single, "I'm Not Famous." I think kind of that's that's a, kind of a part of it because, like, in the in the song where uh, we're talking about like you never heard of me throwing up on an LA street or yeah. spending twenty grand on shirts. I honestly think that fame today has really been associated with constantly putting selfies out and constantly putting. I'm gonna. So I feel like an easy line in the song is like, "You never heard that I'm putting out selfies ten thousand times a day," and it's just yeah. we're not. You know, so like that's just another experience that we drew from. You know, for the song, I guess. When you sort of emulate your sort of careers after? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, well, in terms of that, not necessarily sticking together, but in terms of like the music, I guess Beach Boys we really look up to because they, from in the fifties and sixties, they like did. I feel like there are bugs all over me. Like I, I literally feel bugs I'm not feeling out. that. Really? I don't think he's me good. neither. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm doing okay. Do you want to switch with me? Yeah. Okay. Let's get the camera position right. There we go. Is that good? There we go. Perfect. Let's finish this. Um, yeah, the Beach Boys in like the 50s and 60s did a lot of like fun party music, like the equivalent to what party oh music God. would be now. You feel it? Yeah. That's so weird. Do you guys want to shift? No, no, no. Okay. It's totally fun. Um, and then it's they now were an able... integral part of this. Interview. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and then they were able to kind of branch off and make something very serious and very impactful. And I kind of want to have that career where we can do the side that is just fun and you get to escape your problems and just get into the music. And then the side that kind of brings up your problems and brings up issues that no one is talking about. Also, if you look at somebody like Paul Simon, who started out with Simon and Garfunkel, and then he like really changed his sound with just about every single album. Yeah. He incorporated um, African drums and horns and all these different instruments as he grew as an artist. And I think that's something also that's really important for us. That we, we're not pigeonholed into one specific genre or, one, like you were saying, one specific emotion you're trying to convey. Right, yeah. Is that something you think about as you're writing or just something that sort of naturally occurs? I think it's natural. I think we take it on a song-by-song -song basis if we're... If we just went to a party, I'm often in the mood to write a party song. And if I'm just feeling more emotional, I, I just kind of take it as a song by song basis and it all has kind of a common thread of our unique uh, lyrics and unique production. And I feel like it all feels like AJR, even though it's two different sides. Yeah. What's the worst smelling thing in your tour van? <laughs> I would Ryan. have to say Ryan. <laughs> just as a whole, as yes. a human? Ryan, okay, it's thank just... You. One fart a minute with him. Oh, really? Couple, yeah, it's just constant. Okay. It's always you triple didn't know. <laughs> just, And he sleeps through so it. So you should be, see a doctor. I mean, that's it's, It is a medical a thing. It's, yeah, it's a medical <laughs> thing, yeah. Okay. Who's the most likely to cheat at Monopoly? Adam. Adam, by far. <laughs> Hands down. I'm always the banker. He cheats, he cheats uh, at, uh, at board games. That's his thing. Okay. That's my thing. Like, if you had to make one thing. Not yeah, the base. <laughs> you you have to cheat at board shorts the housing market. <laughs> <laughs> in Monopoly. Yeah. That's, that's what we can do. <laughs> Who is one person on this tour that you'd most like to be the big spoon to your little spoon? Okay. Um, I'm going to have to go with Travis from We the Kings. It's just, he looks like the perfect spooning shape to me. <laughs> Anything else? Is that I've been thinking about that for a while, and I'm well. glad you asked because I really yeah, need to get that out. I can yeah. Tell. Yeah. New single, I'm Not Famous, is out now. Check it out. It's super different from what we've been doing. It's something new, uh, production wise, lyric wise, and just have fun with it. It's a fun song. Hey, what's up? I'm Adam. I'm Jack. And I'm Ryan. And we're AJR, and you're watching Never Sometimes TV. <laughs> <laughs> where my haters, where my haters, I don't got them. I'm not famous, no.